Today, we're making four different meads using tea as the base. We're making a mint green tea, masala chai, and lemon ginger mead. Let's get started. So these teas were a generous gift from Lamy Wellness. The wonderful couple over there sent me four different teas to try about six months ago and I finally decided to do something with them. I haven't done much with tea in the past and I really want to dive into what kind of flavors are still there after tea has been fermented on. Here are the recipe cards for each of these meads. You'll notice that the biggest difference is the amount of tea and steeping time for each one. Outside of that, the rest of the recipes and ratios should be almost the same. I got my tea steeping times and temperatures from the bags themselves. We started by making the tea bases for each. You can see the times and temperatures on the screen. After we made the tea, we blended our honey and tea into each container. We're using lemon blossom honey for each of these meads, but you can use any other kind of honey that you have. You can see all the starting gravities for each mead on screen as well. It's really important that you take a gravity reading when you make mead, so go get a hydrometer and take that reading so you can know the true alcohol by volume for your mead post fermentation. We are using the Lauvin DV10 because it's a clean fermenter and hopefully will keep most of these tea flavors in the brew throughout the fermentation. We pitched our yeast and our yeast nutrient at the same time. I didn't want to worry about a staggered nutrient schedule with four different meads, so we pitched our yeast and the nutrient at the start and we let them start fermenting. The fermentation time was about two to three weeks. We then noticed that they were done fermenting because everything had started to drop to the bottom of each container and it started to clear up. We racked each mead into a new container and went ahead and took another gravity reading. Racking is the process of moving your mead into a new container. It's encouraged to do this with an auto siphon and tubing so you can avoid oxygen introduction. The final gravity of each was 1.000. This means that we fermented through all the sugars available here. Here are the ABVs based off of these gravity readings. It was time for us to back sweeten these meads, so we went ahead and stabilized them so we didn't have to worry about any further fermentation. You have two methods of doing this. You can either pasteurize the brew, which is the process of heating it up to a certain temp for a certain amount of time that kills the yeast, or you can use potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite in conjunction. Both of these things halt further fermentation, which is important because we're going to back sweeten this with a fermentable sugar and the yeast would continue to ferment given that they were still alive. After we stabilized our meads, we went ahead and waited a few more days to make sure the stabilizers were mixed in. We then back sweetened each one with 12 ounces of lemon blossom honey. We mixed all of that in and it put our final gravity for each at about 1.024. We let them set for a few more days so they'd hopefully clear up. They naturally cleared over the course of about a week and a half and it was time for us to bottle them. We bottled them with a bottling wand, we capped them and corked them as we needed to and put a label on them. They've been aging for about a month or two since I did all of that, and it's now time to taste it. So let's go to the tasting. So we're about to go into the tasting of these meads, and I wanna kind of be honest with you and tell you what happened. Mandy from Baywood Mead, myself, sat down. We recorded a Zoom call. She tasted all four of these meads and finished up the call. It was really fun. We had a great time. I forgot to move the files off of my computer to my editing and accidentally deleted them. So they are literally lost in existence. I only have her audio and my face. So you are gonna see a uh, animated version of her thanks to some artist from Fiverr. And while it might be different, it's still kind of fun. I tried to help, or he tried to recreate Mandy in the most animated possible way. So I hope you enjoy this tasting with an animated version of Mandy who's actually talking in myself. Here we go. And we're gonna, we just talked about an order. So we're gonna try and do this where we won't totally kill our palate with each one. Let's start with the green tea mead. So let's pop it open and pour it. Yeah. Okay, green tea mead, 9.2% ABV. These all used lemon blossom honey mm. um, as the primary fermentation side. And then we came back with more lemon blossom honey after we stabilized. They went dry, we stabilized, so we back sweetened. And uh, I'm curious to see what you think. So here we go. Lemon, lemon? Nope, sorry. Green tea. Green oh, so tea. Wrong, sorry, green. I poured the right one, I promise. Green tea. What do you get on the nose? 
tomato sauce or tomato <laughs> soup. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> that's that's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> that's like tomato soup. I can he, I can see it. That's what's that's what's really tough too. It's very savory smelling. That's weird. It does have that aroma. I don't like that. I I do not like tomato sauce. It doesn't. Oh, no. I hope it doesn't taste like tomato sauce. I hope not too. Wow, what a weird aroma. I never very thought I'd get that in mead. Okay, well let's hopefully taste it and maybe not get a tomato sauce taste. Here yes. we go. Um, <laughs> Does it taste like tomato sauce in your opinion? It's it's weird because there is like the essence of the smell in the flavor. Yes. Yeah, I agree. 100%. But it's so bitter. Mm, <laughs> it is bitter. Mm -hmm. And it's very herbal for sure. Yeah. It's so interesting i so when i did my tea blends i i followed the, their packaging you know i did it i did a whole gallon and so then i would yeah. you know whatever i had to do some math to figure out how much to put in and i went off the back of their thing i'm not a tea person I, i'm not not that i don't like it it's that i don't do much with it so the whole steeping time and temp i was like i'm just gonna trust whatever they say I do agree. There is a bitter note here, and it could have been mm -hmm. over extraction on my end or something. I don't know, but I agree it, with that. Yeah, it's tough. I think green teas and and black teas can just be like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, it's this is an experience. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never made mead or had mead with uh, straight like tea blends before. Uh -huh. I don't think so. What do you yeah, think about the, agree. you know, everybody always talks about tea for tannin. So this is also tackling the topic of like, well, how much tannin is present? Obviously, we have some sweetness here. I think we're like 10, 10, 10, 15, final gravity. Mm -hmm. So there's some body in that regard. But what do you think about the tannin? There is tannin there, but there's also big flavor. Yes. I mean, there is like a grit that lasts. It like lingers. So I, I do think that there's... But you, uh, yeah, you'd have to put quite a bit in to to get that full tannic. Yeah. It's not like a little uh, sprinkle of tea, you know. You gotta. I'd agree. I do think that there's a odd flavor here, and I don't know if it's maybe it's the culmination of that lemon blossom plus this green tea. And the only way for us to really know is to to try the next one and see if there's a um, common theme <laughs> going on here. So. Green tea, let's let's do this. I want you to rate them out of 10. And you're not gonna okay. hurt my feelings because I'm, I, it's fine. I make a lot of mead, so. Out of 10, what do you give this guy? Oh golly, it's not my favorite. Okay, that's fair. I think it's my least favorite I've had of your meads. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Everything else good. Yeah, that's okay. Is good. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I will, I will accept that. But it's also like not your, it's not like a, a fault as like the, the brewer you know mm, it's not mm, mm. it's just the ingredient I it's, think it's an interesting not, one not the best maybe by itself maybe blended with other things that would work but. yeah i'd be interested to see as well all right so what'd you uh, rate that one what are you gonna rate it maybe a four okay okay i would i would give it a four or five i'll say a five it's it's pretty mid okay. in my opinion all right let's move on we have next okay. up a lemon ginger tea based mead kind of dancing around the same avenue lemon blossom honey so we'll see how that plays mm -hmm. into this very curious all right here's what it looks like also it's about the same color yeah it's pretty a little this more clear, clear than my other one yeah, okay this one's super clear on the nose Tomato sauce. So much better. <laughs> no more so tomato sauce. Better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I definitely get the the lemon on that nose. Yeah, for sure. And ginger, of course. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Tea is. It's definitely been fun to dive into this because tea does add so much different flavor. I didn't put any lemon or ginger in this thing, and it has that presence. Yeah. All right. Shall we? Yes. Here we go. Very ginger heavy. That's nice. That is nice. 
I like this one. The tannin's different. The tan is more, um, it's uh, not to say watery, but it's thinner. You know, it's not the same presence that we got with that uh, green tea. Hmm. No, the green tea had a much stronger tannic feel. This is this is light. Yeah. It's very pleasant. This it is, is nice. a nice. Uh, this is a nice little mead right here. The um, there's a little bit of a, a taste there at the end that kind of pops up for a second and then goes away. I'm not sure if that's the honey, a flavor within the honey profile. But the tea mm. itself is really nice. That the lemon ginger blend. You know, of course, I did use lemon honey, so I'm just continuing to pronounce that flavor profile ultimately. Mm hmm. hmm. Yeah, the, the ginger's so nice and light, and it just, like... Because it does sort of, like, slowly climb a little bit. Like, yeah. you can feel it. And that's like, woo! Yeah, and so... There's just later. this nice little... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I like it. Out of the 10, what do you give this one? I'd say an 8. An 8? Okay. I mean, I like it. It could be a 7. I'd give it between. I'd give it a seven and a half. Only because I feel like there's a, a sharpness that comes with ginger and lemon combined mm -hmm. that might not be for everybody. It's a little bit sharp to me, but also I do wonder with time, how could these mellow? Yeah. These are, for reference, because I think that matters. These were made at the end of November. So we are, at this point, a tasting two months old. And they're nice. all about 10%. So, okay. Cool. 7.5, 8, roughly in that realm, a little better. Okay, let's move on. So we're yep. going to look at the cinnamon roll tea mead. When I saw this one, I was like, how can you make cinnamon roll into a tea? They've done I don't it. know, but I'm ready to find out. We're going to find out. It was a, um, this one used the most amount of tea, like of all of them. I was just dumping oh. and dumping and dumping tea in this thing. I was like, Am I using too much? I like went back and double checked my notes two or three times and huh. it wasn't too much. So we'll see. I think it'll be, should be a little bit of a different color. Yes. Just a little darker. Yeah. More of an amber. Yeah. It's good looking. I mean, they all cleared, which was nice. They all cleared yeah. naturally too. There was something interesting that I noted. I didn't have to clear any of them. I didn't have to do anything to add any agents after back sweetening. They, within 48 hours or so, all cleared. So I don't know if there's some charge, positive, negative, whatever. It all just went to the bottom. I was like, this is nice. Interesting. Heck yeah. All right, on the nose. Round three of tomato sauce. <laughs> it is interesting. The spice side, yeah, it's definitely all spicy. Mm hmm. I get that cinnamon, yeah. cinnamon on there for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else you know? It's hard when your nose is. Let's just go for it. Let's oh. see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There okay. we go. <laughs> the cinnamon in that the spices, like the beginning is like this battle, and then you like kind of see at the end they're like ah, oh, kind of prevailing. But at the beginning, yeah. it's really fighting with all that honey and the sweetness that's coming from it. I agree. And the aftertaste isn't as nice on this. Yeah, it dips down into a, that bitter note again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bitterness. Uh, and I feel like, unfortunately, it's not so much like a like with cinnamon roll. I would have anticipated maybe a little bit more of like a creamy vibe or like a yeah. vanillin. Hmm. And you really only get cinnamon. Yeah. Which, speaking of which, it would be really fun to make a cinnamon roll meat. I, I'm thinking about that now. You just said creamy side. I'm like, okay, well, maybe some like lactose <laughs> and maybe some like maltodextrin and, you know, throw a little vanilla in there. And next thing you know, you got this like. Mm. I, but then, as I've learned from doing meads that are food related, it's so hard to get away from the mental image of like, I'm biting a cinnamon roll because then people think like texture and then like. And so it's right. it's a balance. But I'd be curious now to do it. Yeah, It'd be interesting. that'd be fun. It's not bad. I do think that the bitter note at the end dips down. There isn't a ton of the spices, like you said, but I do think the honey's decent here. I don't know if maybe lemon blossom was the best, maybe a more wildflower or even just something that's more uh, roasty could be interesting. Yeah. Like a boche 
This could have been interesting with like some sort of bouchade, wildflower flower honey, cinnamon roll tea, throw in some lactose or vanilla. You know, you could really get something going on there. Oh yeah. Or just make it from scratch. I'd be curious to see if anybody wants to try and make a true cinnamon roll mead, what that looks like. All right, out of 10, what you got? Oh golly, this one's probably like a five or six. Mm -hmm. Maybe a five, I'm gonna say a five. I think with time, some of those flavors will like chill out, but at this current moment, I'm I'm not going above a five. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't feel enticed to just down that last little bit, so. Yeah. Okay, so far our favorite has been the lemon ginger. That one was pretty smooth, considering. We have one left, and that is a masala chai mead, which you said you like chai tea, so hopefully this does not disappoint. This one's not as clear in my world. I, I don't know if it got super uh, messed up on the way to you. Same process, of course. Here's what it looks like. They all ended about the same color, even the the cinnamon roll. I mean, while it's a shade darker, it's still about the same color, which is interesting. Yeah. They're all that sort of ambery, yellowy Ooh. color. Okay, nose. That's, That's chai got tea. Some <laughs> that, spice. That is chai tea. That's spicy. Yeah. Mmm, okay. That uh the honey sort of appears in there, but it's pretty pretty spice heavy. Hmm. Yep. All right, last one. Here we go. Here we go. As a chai tea person, where do you fall? Interesting. I feel like it holds promise. <laughs> it holds promise. <laughs> holds promise, because chai teas are also like a creamy... Yeah. A creamy beverage. It's and true. So that's where I also want to see this. It... It, to me, has a, uh, uh, maybe it's my brain playing with that idea of chai tea. You know, I've had, I like chai tea and I drink it in different forms and fashions. It does have a smoother body here. It's not as, yes. it, it's it's interestingly smoother, but it's not, definitely not creamy. Right. And the, um, it doesn't have like a weird bitter aftertaste or anything either. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel like you can... I don't know. It, the spice is fuller. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd agree. I think that the the spices are definitely, and, and it's just a chai tea thing too, though. They're they're so prevalent. I mean, they're they all compete. Even in the drink itself, all mm. of those spices are just kind of going to bat at each other, honestly. So I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. I think that it's a good blend. It does feel a little heavy on that spice but you also want that if you're gonna have a chai tea mead you want to have something that tastes like chai tea mead you know yeah honestly i i do like the um the overall level of spice and the flavor i think came through really well especially uh -huh. as it like kind of opens up more i think just yeah like a a different type of honey mm -hmm. and then throw in some lactose and whatever to like cream it up a bit yeah yeah and make it make it fuller because it's like i taste it and i'm like i oh, i taste the chai spice and i want it to uh-huh be more of like a, a fuller mouthfeel yeah i i agree i think it'd be interesting to to put all of the i mean not all of these i don't definitely don't want a creamier lemon ginger or or you no. know <laughs> green tea <laughs> mead but i definitely want cinnamon roll with this just chai tea side I would say if you are interested in doing something with tea, like it is a fun thing to play around with in general. Um, specifically, like my favorite, or I guess we need to rate this one real fast before I go too far. What, what are you going to rate this out of 10? I mean, honestly, the flavor's like what I would want it to be. I mean, overall, it's... Does this beat out the lemon ginger? Oh, man. That's hard. I know. I feel like it's almost like tying with it. Because of how well, mm -hmm. it's all like blending. this, yeah, like this tea, wherever you got this tea, yeah, this is a good blend. I feel like to use to like experiment with as yeah. well, and you know, if you don't want to just make chai, which I feel right. like this chai would be delicious, yeah, it's yeah. like a normal tea, <laughs> right? Um, 
yeah, this is like pretty legit. You got to make pick a number, one to ten. Are you gonna dethrone the lemon ginger? Or are you gonna let it let it win? Let me try the lemon ginger again. <laughs> okay, let me side by side real fast. This is Mandy at Mead Stampede in the Best of Show, and we're just like <laughs> we're like at the top. She's like, "This is hard. I can't." <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like I'm gonna like pick. Um, I feel like okay, as a mead, as the mead that you made, I would say the lemon ginger beats. Okay. Chai. All right. I think I mean, overall. Yeah. It is just more balanced yeah. or something i mean there's no wrong answer this is all personal too and what's what's cool about this is I, I would agree i'd say the lemon ginger is something i would drink more of this one's good it's t a little too i don't want to say savory because we you know we use that word in reference to the green tea mead <laughs> but it yeah. is more savory with all the spices so ultimately i i would probably drink more lemon ginger and a little bit less of the chai. So if you want to make a tea mead, uh, there's a great resource. I'll put them down below. They're so kind to send me some tea for this. Um, but also I think, well, I've done it before. I've just bought store-bought tea and literally just like the, the weird tea bags and thrown them in. I did it with an orange and cinnamon tea. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. So it is very doable to make a good tea based mead and get some fun flavors with it. Uh, so if you want to check them out or just go buy your own, it's very simple. Very repeatable, too, which is nice. Well, Mandy, thank you for being part of this tasting. If you would like to support Mandy and check her out, she has her own YouTube channel where she makes mead and talks about mead and educates you on how to make it better. And it's really fun. It's under Faywood Mead. Put some links down, of course, in the description. But you should go check her out. She's really fun, obviously, if you've seen today. So yeah, thanks for being here, Mandy. Thank you. We Had will a great time. we'll see you over on your channel. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Um.